I understand that there are, there's a lot of judgment out there about everything. You're old and I'm not. And I went, mm. I said, are you Benjamin Button? Women smell, older women smell of cabbage, what? like old cabbage. And I remember just being so, you know, that there's a smell that comes with. Just, it's going to affect four billion women. Yeah, they're so taboo in Gozo in 1995, unheard of. And I just said, oh, I don't care. This is what we're doing. What? Yeah. <laughs> You're at crossroads, right? And you can go this way or this way. Whichever route you take, there's going to be guilt. And young people are, are actually dying because they don't know what they're doing. There are billions of women passing through similar experiences all around the world. And for whatever reason, we often feel like we're alone. It's time to make a point of discussing these topics from a range of viewpoints. Women in the workplace, fertility, the menopause, women's rights, social media, sexuality, body image, politics, relationships, parenting, age, and women in their role today. These conversations surpass age, race, location. They are relevant to women everywhere. Welcome to The She Word. Conversations that women rarely have, but really should. There is one idea that makes life just an okay life. It is that everything moves in one straight line. But we have a different idea about life, where you can start over every day. A circular journey. At Browns, we curate for that journey. For you to find your better self, your more confident self, healthier self, comfortable self. Start your journey today. Find your way to wellness with Browns. Welcome to the She Word, conversations that women rarely have but really should. And today's a bit of a special because it's the last show of season one and I'm with three amazing ladies and we're going to be looking back at what's happened over the last 12 shows. So first of all, I'm joined by Elaine Bajaya. Elaine, you are no stranger to the camera because you've actually worked in TV production with Sharabank, but you also worked in the theatre, but you've also worked in marketing and you're one of the reasons that we look so beautiful because you're here on behalf of Mac. So right. so lovely to have you here. Thank you <laughs> Thank so you much. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you for being here. Um, Kareen, you Hello are again. back again. Hello again. Hello yes. again. Uh, still counting the days of the number of days since you've had a period? I am indeed. Yes. Yes, I'm rooting for 365. There we go. Because, yes. of course, you were in the show Women and Menopause. Yes, and at that point it was 75 days. Yeah. Now it's well over 100. That is amazing. I'm so, so pleased we're for We're getting you. there. Getting I'll throw there. a party <laughs> if it happens. <laughs> we're all coming. Yes. Um, but, of course, if anybody doesn't know you and hasn't seen Women in Menopause, you're also a radio DJ and a voiceover oh, yeah. artist yeah. as well. And Sam. Sam, thank you so much for being with us again today. You were in Women in Age and Women and Women's Rights, two very important shows. But not only that, Sam, you actually host us because this is your kitchen. It is my kitchen. And I can't believe we're at the wrap with the wrap up show already. Isn't it amazing? It's been incredible. Because yeah. this what was a journey. An incredible journey because you and I had a conversation on this kitchen table. For what now, four months ago, five months Probably, ago? Probably, yeah, something about that. We talked about making this happen on this kitchen table and decided right there and then that this happened to have to had had to happen right here. Yeah. So I'm gonna cheers. Indeed. Cheers, ladies. Thank cheers. you so much. Cheers. 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 Um and we're gonna talk through, as I mentioned, we're gonna talk through the shows that we've had and the things that we've discovered. And it's been an incredible journey for me. But I want to kick off, first of all, by talking about something that we all identified. When we talked about this before we came to the show today, we talked about one thing that was said and we all wanted to mention it. And of course, I pulled rank and said, I'm mentioning this one. And that was Women and Parenting. And it was an amazing show. I learned so much. But one of the things that really knocked me for six was that Melissa sat there and said her most unexpected uh, part of being a parent was the guilt. And then immediately Denise and Tamara went, yeah, absolutely the guilt. And I was not ready for that. But you ladies also said 
that that was something that picked up you picked up on as well so I mean for each one of you uh, let's have first of all have a look at the clip and then I'm going to get you guys to to budge in there with what you wanted to say but your challenge the, the, the thing not necessarily the challenge but the thing that you didn't know before you became a parent that now you're like blow me down I wish I'd known that guilt mm. mm -hmm. like incredible amount of guilt um, I don't think everyone is necessarily like that, but I think most people struggle with guilt because you question yourself whether you are doing it the right way or not. And there's no right or wrong way. Obviously, there's no book about it, how you should do it. But I find myself constantly thinking like, am I doing the right thing? Should I be telling them this? How should I deal with this situation? And I'm constantly feeling guilty about mm -hmm. everything. It does get a bit better, but... Yeah, the guilt is intense. So, Elaine, we've seen the clip. We've all remembered what, what Melissa said and, and just how profound that was. But why did that have such an effect on you? Um, I think the guilt is something that nobody prepares you for. Um, so, of course, uh, I have a daughter. She's eight now. But leading up to having her, you, you're preparing yourself mentally and physically. Um, but... Uh, that this is something that nobody mentions. And I think it struck me specifically because um, there are there's a lot of things you read about, um, uh, but there's a lot of opinions on things. So at the end of the day, I think as parents, we're all winging it. So whatever you're doing... it's <laughs> a great way of putting it. <laughs> yes. Whatever you do, yeah. there is guilt. So if, you, if you're at crossroads, right, and you can go this way or this way, whichever route you take, there's going to be guilt. If you choose to stay at home, you're probably um, feeling guilty because you're not developing yourself. If you go to work, you're feeling guilty because you're not giving your child the time, as much time as maybe you should if there is a should, but there's another conversation entirely. But yes, I think um, the guilt is, is always there. Whatever you do, no matter how old they get, it's always there. And but, I think but, 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 but Sam, coming to you, but this is what threw me completely because you've just said, Elaine, that you're winging it. But women have been having children since the beginning of the human race. So how is it that we're all winging it and feeling guilty? Because it's the first time... The first time you do it, just whatever, you can read books, you can go to classes, you can do all of, you know, all of the prep work. But until you actually have a baby that you are solely responsible for and literally listening to whether they're breathing for the first year, um, there isn't, until you've had that experience, you, you, nobody can tell you how, how you are winging it because nobody's going <laughs> to, it is just this extraordinary first time experience. I think by th three and four, you're a little bit more like, ah, oh, she's definitely breathing. She's yeah. fine. <laughs> she's she's okay. She's okay. a glass of wine. Yeah, yeah she's okay. Make your own bottle. To sleep. I she think, can do I it. I actually yeah. think the guilt slightly sort of diminishes. <laughs> I like, the, I like, you know, the, with the number that you have. <laughs> I like your style of parenting. Yes, That's she's breathing. Fantastic. I'll drink the you wine. Know, she's fine. She's good. But, yeah. but is that why you flagged that comment? Did you, when... When Melissa mentioned the guilt, did that resonate with you? Did you suddenly go, okay, I identify with that? Absolutely, absolutely. It resonates. It resonates because I think it's just by default. It's by default of being a, a, a parent, a carer that you feel you're never... And I think this actually um, ties in, was it Crystal saying in business, this thing about women have to be, having to be everything. So you've got to do it all well. You have to do everything yes. well. And this sort of myth around that, you know, you've got to, the baby's got to look, and, they, and they've got to be well-dressed, and they've got to be clean, and they've got to do this, or, and your kitchen has to be clean, and you're this. Your you entire house. You yeah. know, your entire house. You have to fed everyone. You know, all of these, the, these you know, roles that we, we have to fulfill on top of just being a new parent. But on top of this, I think there's the element of the fact that everybody's different all the children are different mm -hmm. yes so there's no formula is there i mean you no. can go to as many classes read as many books as you want but everybody's experience <laughs> is entirely different well that's sort of a bit like women in menopause because that's what we were talking about there everybody's experience of that is different and that's coming back to you cor because yes. that's the show we did together but staying with the theme of parenting you also said that thing about guilt huge guilt and it never goes away like you said it just never goes away they, my daughter will be 28 and it doesn't go away how, but how 
can you live with that? I mean, is there not something that you can say to yourself? Okay, I can let go of the guilt now. I can get guilty over anything. It's amazing. Over anything. If she sends a message and I don't put that little heart emoji on her little... I'm like, oh, I didn't do that. Let me go back. She might think that I didn't like what she said or... or if I don't like every single thing she posts on social media, which is not reciprocated, by the way. <laughs> we'll have words about this later. But yes, we, we, you know, I like everything that she puts on because I, I want to. I'm her mother. I should be the one that likes everything she, she posts. And uh, it started when she was very young. Yeah, I was a young mother. I didn't realize too much about the guilt at first. And then when it hit, I didn't know what it was. It was this feeling of hopelessness, like no matter what I do, is it ever going to be good enough? If I need to go to work and I have to leave my child, what am I going to miss those milestones in her life? Will I be there when she takes her first step, says her first word? Uh, so it was a, a double-edged sword. Well, that show was huge. That, that Women in Parenting was a massive, massive show anyway. And so many, so many women got in touch and said, I identify with what all three women said. And their, their stories were so different. And they connected over this one area, which was parenting and, and all of the aspects of that. Um, but there are, obviously, we've had, we've had 12 shows. So... Moving on from women and parenting, because I think also what came out of that, again, not as a parent, I learned so much. And what I realized is we need to talk about different aspects of that. So at the moment, we're looking at for season two, women and parenting, women and what's the word for after you have a baby? Postpartum. 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 I think we need yeah. to look at that. That's my naivety <laughs> there. But also uh, women and pregnancy and all of these sorts of things. And we'll come back because we will look in, in depth more at those topics themselves. Because Sam, right from the very beginning, you said every time we talk, you've got a spin off of like a hundred yeah, shows you really from do. it. You really so do. What, and it just scratches. The, they, they really do. Each episode has, uh, you know, a hundred more conversations to be having around because so many. They're all amazing. I have to say, having I really have enjoyed going back over them and listening to them, listening and watching. So, because yeah. that's been quite interesting too, Doc, trying to catch up and be in the car and just you know be listening to them on the way somewhere. And um, they are because they're such honest conversations, and I think that's you know the the they really are genuine, honest conversations, and all of them are about our each individual's experience. So although we share. The experience of be it be it motherhood, be it menopause, be it you know women in the workplace, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, they're all in individual experiences with common, obviously commonality, and you know. And I think they've been they're just conversations that need to keep happening. Well, what was something that was said that resonated with you or took you by surprise? Oh well, we've all really had we've had quite a few of the same ones, haven't we? We've definitely yes. had to sort of go, no, okay, I'm not going to say that one. No, okay, <laughs> you say that one. <laughs> um, you mention it. Yeah. But actually, the men menopause um, um, when um, the the whole conversation in menopause around bespoke care, looking for you know tailor made um, be it medication or you know the natural route. But I think really researching for yourself, really understanding, because again, it, we are all individually completely different. And so actually really understanding where your, what your bloods are, what you need, um, really struck me. And I thought it was just a, a really important, informative um, so episode. Is. Like, yeah. you, you know, we're not, not you know, uh, we're not generic. We have to, you know, we're, we're completely, you know, individual. And then the whole conversation around missing your period or not. <laughs> Oh, which I know no. because I because I you know I really that really uh, resonated it was Mariella who said that wasn't it it, was it really Mariella, yes. um, resonated <laughs> with me because yourself and Moira were like oh my god I'm so glad uh, you know that I'm I not and you wait. were like yes 365 yeah. 365 but actually I really I did feel sad when I you know, which sounds kind of ridiculous because it's such a long old journey that we have periods for but I did feel sad because it was a very clear sim it's not even symbolic real um change in my body by that not happening anymore that meant I can't Pretend this isn't happening to me yes this is you real can't ignore it. I am moving into another phase of my life so that's I where I'm at a bit right emotional now. about <laughs> I, it I don't and miss it resonated but you're with right, me Sam, yeah. just because I was like oh that yeah. means I don't want to pay I don't want to bleed I'm, I'm delighted however it's like 
you're never going to do that again. It's a milestone in your it's life, isn't it? That you that you yeah. need to be aware of. And like you said, you were on the pill. You hadn't realized until you came off of it, and then you were full blown. Whereas I've eased into it gradually, maybe a bit in denial, not sadness because I don't want to bleed. I can't wait for that to stop. Yeah, but but yes, sadness that okay, you're here now. Yeah, this is where here. you are. How did you get here? That's what I think. How on earth did that happen to me? How? Well, for anybody, anybody, <laughs> who, want it, you know. <laughs> anybody who missed that show, we'll just have a quick look at the clip where Mariella talks about the fact she's going to miss her period. <laughs> and Moira and I are both like high-fiving each other because yeah. we're like, yeah. great. It's just the way she said it. She was genuinely... She, she was. Well, let's just, uh, let's just take a quick it. look at that clip. Women have learned how to get on with it, you know. Mm, I mean, women get I a agree. period every month. Yes. Women suffer every month. And I We're don't tough. miss. Uh, I don't miss. No, neither do I. I mean, I'm a bit crazy. People look at me and think I'm it. mad because yeah. I miss. I'm. I was very, very sad. <laughs> I can't get so, over this. But it. why? Why were you she sad? She said it before. I and was she's sad. Saying, very sad. In sad? fact, I'm 58 and I stopped getting my period at the age of 56. And and and, and I, last that I was long? No. no, no, I was sad. I sad. Can't, I can't believe she's actually saying that she was sad and she misses she misses her period. I've That's never heard of anyone say it. it. That's how much I I like many other women have yes. learned how to get on with it. Uh-huh. I uh-huh. get on with it. And so there you go. You see, because Moira and I were both absolutely in denial. Yes, I, I, yeah. I was Peter. I'm the equivalent of Peter Pan. I never thought that was going to happen to me. I thought menopause. I'm fit. I run. And like you're yeah. saying about Mary Ellen missing that, coming to you it freaks me out. Well, you're not there. Yeah, yeah. Your age is away. You're <laughs> fine. No, but the thing <laughs> is, it feels really far away, and and in reality, it's not at all. I mean, I'm 38. Okay, I don't shy away from saying my age, but I, I did. First of all, I didn't know about perimenopause. I had no idea that you could even get menopause at what 43 or 42. So that's really close now. <laughs> and I'm like, hmm, you know, this. It was a really good show to watch. It was a reality check that listen you know we're, this happens to you and your body adjusts and um but i still remember so mariella said um this is like a constant pmsing oh, yeah. by 200 <laughs> yes, like, yes. Oh, you know? she was spot on with that. Me was, out. Yeah. but apparently I, I spoke to a few people after that show and they said you know it wasn't the same for me so i think it's it, it also is, yeah. is very very much you know um, uh, um a different journey for each it each is it is but yeah. to be constantly pmsing really freaked me out because i know you know when i'm pmsing first of all people brush you off it's true you mentioned that in the show and people oh you know your your period's due you're okay you're, you know this is why you're reacting this way and i hate that to that start makes me with. very angry and yeah yes, hearing but that apart that from is... that um you know to be constantly so so sensitive it feels like i mean when, uh, personally it feels like my world is going to collapse when i'm in that place so to think that you're constantly in that place it's really scary actually. but to put that in context it absolutely draws a line. You just said, Sam, it draws the line between parenthood and something else we're all going to experience, which is menopause. We don't talk about it. We don't talk about the downside of it. We don't discuss it. You just said, you know, you hadn't even heard of the term me- perimenopause. Neither had I. Neither had and I. yet it happens to yeah. every single woman. We are 8 billion on the planet. Let's say just slightly over half of us are women. It's going to affect, if we're lucky enough to get to that point, it's going to affect four billion women and yet like the guilt of parenthood we, it's not something we not necessarily talk about i think this is because there's so there's shame in aging in our population in in our culture you know in other in other cultures in japanese cultures you know women are revered for being older and i definitely think there's a sort of it's obviously changed since our our parents like my mother um it is more it is more discussed but what you're acknowledging which is what you're acknowledging when you don't have a parent anymore yeah. is i am getting older that's it 
And that's what, and then it's like within that, it's like, oh, so you're losing your sexuality, you know, you, you, all of those things that come with that. I mean, I remember, anyway, this is not a menopause conversation. I mean, it's not a whole episode about menopause, but I just remember someone saying to me when I was younger, you know what happens when you get the menopause? You know, as a big joke, it was supposed to be funny, you know, some, you know um, women smell, older women smell of cabbage. Like old cabbage. And I remember just being so, you know, that there's a smell that comes with. Just a minute. Associated. I know, oh, it's shocking. <laughs> yeah. We're all cabbage. Cabbage. None of us cabbage, do. None of us cabbage, do. Not cabbage. Okay, <laughs> not cabbage. A smell associated with older women. And I think, so I think it's just, it, it's really interesting because I think it is about acknowledging that that means I am older. I'm in that category. But you gain other things, no? Of like course you do. Older, no, no, no. My like, so, God, it's like, course, like we're saying, fabulous not to have a period. Brilliant. You know, I, I, I think things. the confidence that you build yeah. the, and, the, in, and the freedom. Inside, the freedom, which also ties with parents. Mm-hmm. It's, liber- with- it's so liberating mm-hmm. not to give a crap about okay. anything <laughs> anymore <laughs> it or is. anyone. It is and I so never good. realized I had older friends in my life, women, <laughs> who used to say, you just wait. You're not going to care about that in 10 years. Absolutely. And sure enough, now I'm just like, mm. I once had somebody being argumentative <laughs> saying, but you're old and I'm not. And I went, mm. I said, are you Benjamin Button? <laughs> are you going to stay that age forever and ever or go backwards? Then you should shut your pie hole because we're all going in the same direction. Yeah, yeah, and why on earth would you throw age at somebody? I mean, there wasn't a big difference either. Maybe 10, 12 years mm-hmm. between us. It wasn't. But why would people do that? Use age to try and shame you because you're older than me. I'm younger than you. Well, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. You just said something there. I don't know about... Lane, you have to... You got a little way to come to this point, but I turned 40 and I just went, oh, I made it. I don't give a crap anymore. Literally on my 40th here, birthday, yeah. I went, I have now joined another club. And that is a whole nother show for season yeah, two. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, 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 so yeah, coming yeah, yeah. to you, um, something that struck with you, something that you saw in the season that you like, actually that really hit home. Let me start by saying that I was jumping at, at my seat almost throughout all of the episodes. I think um, there was something that resonated in all of them, which is why I had to watch them um, more than once, <laughs> most of them. Um, mental health especially, I think I'm, I'm, I'm quite sensitive about that topic because, I don't know, it draws me and I'm really interested about it. Um, and there were two things. Um, one, when Yasmin said, everybody should go to therapy full stop. And I remember the first time I went to therapy, uh, possibly around three years ago now, I remember walking out thinking, you know, I bought so many things in my life and loads. And this was the best money I've ever spent on myself, period. And in fact, I, I, it, it's a journey, right? And uh, in fact, this is something Yasmin says again, which, which really resonated, tying in with it, when she said, um, you know, this should be a journey. And I've learned so much about myself throughout therapy, not just when you have an issue, but just to go there and learn about why you react to certain things the way you do, because, you know, of the way you've been brought up, because of what you've been expe- exposed to, uh, what you've experienced. And I think that everybody should go through that. And it was a super powerful moment and for anybody who hasn't seen that show let's just take a second to watch that clip you know i would say actually everyone should go to therapy yes. full stop no matter what that is happening in your life well i'm a bit because... biased i cannot say that <laughs> i'm gonna say it for you <laughs> everyone go to therapy i think we need to make therapy cool to be honest it um, is. It is. Uh, thank it really you is. um and i think it should be a positive thing that actually you're yes. taking ownership for your like um, duty as a citizen to be a good citizen yes. and treat the people around you in a way that is is healthy. Is it becoming cool? Yes, it is. I'm surprised when people tell me I don't go to a therapist. I'm like, what do you do with your life? <laughs> so I think one of the things that was very liberating that you just said there is if anything good came out of the pandemic, it was that people could talk about mental health issues because we all had them. That's right. Whoever you were, nobody came out of the pandemic untouched. We all lost someone. We all got sick. We were all isolated. We all had some kind of effect on mental health. And I think that when Yasmin said that, everyone should go to to some kind of therapy, any kind of therapy, and make it part of their life. I think it was hugely liberating for everybody. Coming to you, Cor, let's go and hit you with what was the one thing that was said through the season that really impacted you? 
I think the one thing that was said through the season was said in um, the episode about body image. And it was Sarah Sasagal who said, just because you are a larger woman, I think it was, if you're a larger woman who is exercising and you are proud of your body and you're trying to make a difference, it doesn't mean that you're being complacent because your progress isn't as fast as perhaps someone else. Um, and I can really, really relate to that because I've been working out for almost five years and in the process, I've lost 25 kilos over five years. It's been a slow process, but I've also entered perimenopause. Of course. I, uh, things have been, you know, thrown at me and it's been a bit difficult, but I know where I, where I go wrong. It's never about my exercise. Uh, my exercise is on point. Um, it's my nutrition that I need to see. And I do eat well. It's just not eating often enough. It's, it's a, a big amalgamation of things plus hormones on top, like the cherry. So uh, <laughs> Go it, bless it's, it's a bit more difficult. It happens slower for me, but I'm happy with that. And why shouldn't I be? Why, why does it mean automatically someone will look at me and say, oh, but you, you work out but four cool. or five but times a week, you? And, and when she said that, it struck me. It doesn't mean that I'm complacent. I am bettering myself. I am also free from disease, free from any kind of diabetes, blood pressure, cholesterol, and I can guarantee you it's because I work out as hard as I work out. But it I love exercise anyway. And why do place. I need to justify exactly. to anyone? And she was so strong about body image and I admire that so much. And when she said those words, it doesn't mean that I'm being complacent. And that resonated like a great big gong. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was it meant a lot to me to hear someone else saying that. And she's doing an incredible job. Big, yes. big shout out to Sarah right now. Incredible. She's doing an amazing job and she's taking that whole body image, health, fitness uh, platform and yes. elevating yes. it right up. On that show, you know, I, I was really shocked when Leanne said that she was shy and she had her own body image oh, issues. Yeah. Leanne is a model. Yes. Yes. And, and Leanne would have the body that we would all... Imagine the rest of us. <laughs> supposedly yes. love. And she said, you know, I used to be very, uh, you know, self-conscious and very, very, very um, shy and have her own issues, shy about her skin, about... And it, it really took me by surprise because it doesn't necessarily matter what you look like. We you're, all you're so have right. our, our own, own insecurities. Issues. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's amazing what you, you know, that we, I mean, first of all, it's just, just shocking that anybody would question and would judge anybody else's, you know, journey or uh, yeah. I find yeah. that just breathtaking in, in itself. It's but, really um, sad. And it's rude and it's sad. And I it's need like, to justify to myself constantly. Yeah. No. Like, I know that, uh, you know, I look like this. Hang on a minute. I've worked really hard to look like this. If you saw a photo of me when I was 40 and you saw a photo of me now, you'll see how hard I've worked. It's just been a slower journey for me. Yeah, and yeah. that's okay too. But it's also a journey that doesn't need to be discussed with somebody, you know, this sort of external, uh, someone constantly. I don't know, who's constant. Yeah. And, but, and it's the same way with the women are objectified in terms of how you, what your hair looks like, have you got your yes. nails on, are you this, are you sexy, are you that. Yes. It's the same objectification, isn't it? It is. And unfortunately women do it to each other as well, so sad, especially yes. around body image, especially around bodies. It's sort of, there's a sort of, you know, a comparative side glance that goes on quite, you know, quite a bit. And then when you hit menopause, nobody really does it anymore. So you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> everyone's, going, everyone's going, <laughs> everyone's going down Everyone's like, oh yeah. yeah, you know, so it's all very, it's, everything is all of, you know, it's all so interconnected, yes, isn't it? Right. I think that's what's so, has been so. That's what's so beautiful about this series. Yes, it is. It's Every really single beautiful. topic you can in interconnect with with others yeah. and and it's fascinating it is really fascinating and i think this is something that we also get with age that we build a certain self-confidence and we've also probably gone through the journey of getting to know each other so deeply that you've come to a point as you said you don't really care much anymore mm -hmm. um and i think that's a really sweet spot it's to so be in great. <laughs> freedom again you yes. know freedom of, of people's judgments you know i was never one to care much for what people think to be honest i was always a bit of a rebel in that but um you know but i i understand that there are, there's a lot of judgment out there about everything you know about parenting about body image you know about how successful you are yeah, and, yeah. and 
and as you mentioned, in fact, um, people are, it was women in business, and they said, you know, you're expected to, to be all to of just, these things. Yes, exactly, to be it's all like to, to be a woman, to, literally, although literally, she was a fighter, to so get, slightly have everything. But anyway, yeah, it's like juggling all of that yes. and being good at everything. That's and we sometimes, I mean, I know society, I think society obviously applies that pressure, but then we apply that pressure to ourselves. And actually, does it matter? No, as Crystal said, no, it doesn't matter. Does it matter if your house is not this? Does it, no, it doesn't. And and it, that's so interesting, the psychology of why we think it matters. You know, someone's coming over, I must pretend that I that have a very clean it. kitchen. I mean, it's just kind of ridiculous. Like, we're all grown up mature. And we're like, who cares? And I find that, I mean, I, I can't answer that. I mean, I, you know, I just find it if fascinating If your friends that really love it. you, they won't care Nobody if they come cares. over and you've got some dishes in the sink. And if they do, then there's the door. Bye. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's some, Sam, I'm just going to say, your kitchen is gorgeous. We love so everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers I to love your kitchen. Part, it's been seriously cleaned up for this. But then that may, you know, <laughs> it's but then I don't gorgeous. think the pots and pans are, yeah. you know. <laughs> Listen, we, we've looked at that. That we've looked at that show, we've looked at the body image show. Coming back to you, Sam, is there anything else that was said in the season that you just were like, wow? I really enjoyed being in Women in Age. I really did. It was a real, I, I, it was a privilege. And I really took from, I mean, Helga's energy is so contagious and her experience is extraordinary. And she just laughs in the most beautiful, natural, engaging way. And I really, t- took um you know what she was saying around um appreciating her age the way she's got to um by being able to share her experience with younger women and the mentoring and I just thought that was such a beautiful um let's just take a quick look at that clip but I feel still 25 I know I'm not but I feel very young in my mind my my wife you know I always like to be with young people they encourage me they are fun. I see so much potential. So I think that keeps you as well very, very young. You know, so I, when I'm with young, with young people, especially women, I don't feel old. I feel at par with them. I can talk to them. And I think they feel as well the same. Because if your mind remain, remains young, you remain young. You know, it's, I mean, if you make you feel yourself old and let go. New Max Stack Mascara. Yeah, I mean that is just a phenomenal thing. It to is because say. you also appreciate your your appreciate she, what she's doing is she's appreciating herself and what she's achieved by sharing that her experiences with others and you know she, I think she says you know then people will come and I'll consult and we'll pay you and she's like no just come and have a chat yeah. and the generosity of that and um, extending her experience and her wisdom in that way specifically to young women I think is just extraordinary and that's like ties in with not giving. We don't care so much what people think, and you know. But you've amassed, well, how does amass all of that experience? She's so happy to share, and I just I thought that was really beautiful. And I think that's a show for absolutely every single woman as well, because yeah. if we are lucky, for we sure. get to grow older, as you said, core. We get to the point where we give a crap a little bit less. Yes, it's so great because growing older is a privilege mm-hmm. that is is not bestowed on everyone. And exactly. so like you you were saying, and all of us have said it, we feel very lucky and blessed to be here in the first place at this age. I feel very lucky that I yep. made it this far. Yep. I have friends who didn't. Yep. And when I think about it, I think, what am I complaining about? A few gray hairs, some wrinkles, uh, you know, my belly that is hormonal and is taking a lot of time to get flatter. Yep, yep. Does it really matter at the end of the day? Which was why it was so important to have women of the future mm. and to look at with these young women, yes. look at what concerned them was they're just starting out on their journey that we've already lived and to see and I'd recommend to everybody that they watch that show because it's incredibly important for us to understand what 
is important to young people today. As we go older, grow older, as you said, Helga made a point of saying, stay connected with young people yes. and pass on that experience that you have. Going to come to you, Cor, for your, your second and final kind of what was important for you in the season. Um, honestly, the parental guilt was a big one for me just because I was very young when I had my daughter. So everything I did was kind of backwards. I, I had her I'm pregnant at 19, gave birth at 20. Uh, that's when my career in radio started as well. I had a newborn and, and I was kind of thrown into it. I had to work. We were young. Uh, we had just started living together. So taboo in Gozo in 1995, unheard of. And I just said, oh, I don't care. This is what we're doing. And now it's not even blinked at. Now nothing, and which is, you know, that's another um, episode for you, Trudy. Yeah, exactly. um, but honestly, I, I feel like uh, I was away a lot because I worked on radio and on the side, I DJed in bars and clubs when I was, uh, you know, weekends, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sundays. And I was away from her a lot. I'd work abroad. I was away like from Denise. her a lot. Yeah. And Denise I felt had a very so similar situation. guilty, so guilty, but I, I see I see my daughter now, and she's a very level-headed, independent uh, woman who lives in London and works for a great big company, and she's doing great. And I think, you know, I look at my husband and I say, I don't think we did too badly. We beat ourselves up so much over things, uh, but we did our best. We did what we could do, but I still get the guilt. The guilt never goes away. I try really hard not to feel it. And people say, but you've done, your, your daughter's happy. You've done great. But should I be doing more? Well, let's, okay. let, I just want to touch on that because Women in Parenting was, of all the shows, the one that was most popular. And that's why we're going to break that down into three more shows that we've been discussing, Sam. But as you are three parents, and, and I'm not, I'm, I was not anticipating it to explode the way that it did. Of course, we had Melissa, Tamara and Denise, all ladies who are very well known in their own right. But why would that topic really touch so many women? Why, why would that explode? My point of view, I think that, as we said, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of aspects that people don't talk about. But I remember feeling that everybody used to be a bit patronizing towards me when I used to say, this is really hard. I, I had a career. I was 30. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't 19, but yeah. still. Um, and um, I, I used to tell people, I feel this is really hard. They used to go, yes, but it's very rewarding. So like, you know, it's hard, yes, but focus on the reward. And nobody spoke about why it was hard and it yeah. was not accepted yeah. to say it was hard. And yes, it was hard because I had a career and um, I, I had to keep that career going because I want it. And, and in fact, you mentioned parenting. For me, the identity with the guilt. And that was a really important yeah. aspect for me. I don't know. Um, um, because I really believe that I keep want to keep developing myself. Eventually, my daughter is going to leave home and build herself up. And yes, I put my energy in building her up as well. But I also need to build myself. And this, this is what Tamara said. Tamara talked about identity and mm -hmm. what her identity is. Let's take a quick look at that clip. Mm -hmm. And it's one thing that you have in common. Do you ever feel that you've lost your identity or you do lose your identity? Mm. Or that people perceive that you are Tamara Webb, the mum rather than Tamara Webb, the individual, the businesswoman, everything else? Um, obviously, I'm quite active on social media. So I think people who know me and who follow me know that it's not just about being a mum. But in the beginning, it is just being a mum sometimes because you have to feed them every three hours. You have to change them every three hours. Um, everything is new for you. So in the beginning, I can't say that I didn't lose myself because I did. You know, I used to find myself crying. And I didn't know why. And I used to tell my mother, but why am I crying? I'm happy. I have a baby. It is all I ever wanted. But deep down, I knew it's because my life changed completely. I wasn't, was I ready to um, accept that I couldn't work anymore at the time? Because I couldn't at the time. It's like I wasn't, I didn't have time. It's not all about the baby. The biggest change is the parents. So the biggest struggle is Yourself. how they're feeling when they have a newborn. Thank you. 
And so you were mentioning it, obviously, identity. But when we spoke before we came on this show, you said that tied in with a number of other shows as well. As well. It was mentioned in Women in Age as well. I think that there's a whole conversation there about relevant. whether women are relevant uh-huh. if they don't have children. And of course they are relevant because... Oh my goodness. Why are women here only to bear children? I, I feel so strongly against that. But there is this misconception, um, unfortunately. It's interesting you took that uh, from that conversation because because being in the conversation, it didn't feel like that that it was said that that the conversation was saying you aren't relevant if you don't what it what we were what that's yeah, how I was, so, no, so, but it's very interesting because I don't think that was the suggestion necessarily in in the conversation at all again it's just that different experiences will define how we experience age or how it's so all of our different experiences or how we how we experience parenting you know because we do it we all will do it with our unique DNA and our unique, you know, role modeling from our own families, et cetera, et cetera. So, but it is really interesting that you took that because I, that I, you know, was in that conversation and I didn't feel that that's what was being Maybe necessarily being because... said. But, but, but really interesting that you did. And I think that the, the word relevant is also, you know, it's it, because it sort of almost suggests that, um, you know, you don't have any if you, you know, you're not. You're not important if, and it was more about the kind of, for me, it was more about the context of um, how you're being seen in relationship to society, to, you know, to business, to, I would say, you know, we, you know, the shame around getting old, you know, menopause, then getting older and you've lot, you're sort of not seen. But I think there was a statistic around 40, whatever it was, that X number yeah. of women feel they are unseen. Over the so it came from that, yes. which is what more in relation word, to body change, yeah. menopause, etc., as opposed to you're not seen if you don't have. But there is the issue of identity yes. with, that comes with parenting and not, uh, yes, women not absolutely. being seen. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden the focus is all on the baby and, and nobody yep. you yep. know asks how are you how are you doing how are you doing, yeah. Yeah. Are you doing? Yeah. do you need any yeah. help is yeah. there anything I can do you know it, yeah. these are important questions to ask you. new mothers and, and mothers Absolutely. of toddlers and mothers of teenagers all the way through mm-hmm. but this question <laughs> of identity has touched on every single show we haven't even talked about women in social media and that is all about identity women and their role in the world today, which was about identity when you're doing a job in what would be perceived as a man's workplace. And all of the other shows that we had, that identity, finding your way as a woman and your world, your place in the world, whether you be a parent or whether you be getting older or whatever you're doing, identity has really been a common theme. And I'm going to close with a, a small discussion about something that was said in the show Women, Sexuality and Gender. And Carly and I were sitting at the table uh, talking with Gabby and Maya. And Maya turns around and she says something about uh, the fetish community. And she talks about choking as being part of a sexual act and the implications that young people are trying to emulate that. And as you said, Sam, before Mm. we came on the show, young people are are actually dying because they don't know what they're doing. And as she said that, which was a very serious point, I look across the table at Carly and Carly looks at me and we have this exchange going, "Mm mm-hmm. And we both said kind of at the same time that we felt very vanilla. We'll just take a quick look at that clip. Like there's a, a massive leap of uh, girls suffering um, throat, throat uh, damage because of choking is very acceptable in, in porn these days. And so they're going ahead not knowing, one, there's a special way you do it, um, and two, that you don't go to beyond your partner's thresholds. It's all about consent and ba- clear um, stated boundaries and, and safety. Let's be sober and, and analytical about what it's, you're going to be doing so you don't hurt somebody while you're doing it. Seriously, it's meant to be this consensual act between adults. I think we're both a little vanilla through. <laughs> we keep looking at each other. Like. <laughs> because all through that conversation talking about the choking, Carly kept catch, kept, kept catching my eye and we're going... Oh my word! Oh my word! Oh my word! No, don't don't touch my neck. (laughs) But that's the thing. Like you don't feel comfortable with it, and yet girls are feeling corralled into doing it because it's the done thing. You know, the internet says it. So, and something that came out of that clip 
that really has had the most incredible, profound impact on me, as well as this series that we've been doing, which is so important that we, Carly and I are women from very different backgrounds. She's transgender. We were both facing and feeling the same emotion at the same time and identified. We, we connected mm -hmm. over the sure. fact that we we're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> and we had this beautiful moment and then we kept connecting. And for me, it was very humbling because I think I had preconceptions of Carly, of her, of her sexuality, of who she, who she was as a woman. And that glance blew that away. And suddenly I'm realizing it doesn't matter what age you are, what your background is, where you've come from, what nationality you are. We are all women. And whilst we have our own identity, I think the most important thing that came out from this show that we had a conversation five mm -hmm. months ago was to bring women together over common issues. And I was so humbled by that experience. It was the, the most impactful, I think, of all of the season. I wow. was humbled and I was blown away that I had these preconceptions yeah. and suddenly I was seeing things differently. Isn't that what, we, what we're aiming to do here? You need to create awareness. This is, this is, these are topics that people don't talk about. Like you were saying earlier, we're made to feel ashamed of many mm -hmm. of these topics or opening up about them or being vocal about them. Well, you can be ridiculed. You can be chastised for it. You could be, you shouldn't talk about that. Ladies don't talk about that. Mm -hmm. Well, this lady does. <laughs> and I know a lot of women out there who came up to me afterwards and said, wow, that episode about menopause and perimenopause, now I know why I'm feeling what I'm feeling. And you kind of go, well, there you go. If you can help anyone through this journey and this series, uh, you're doing it. It's about and relatable it's, it's really content. Yeah. Totally relatable yeah. by so many women. And, and I think it is liberating as well, knowing we can talk about it. And also connection. Yes. Because it can connect, even if I don't know you. I mean, we've all met with all of the amazing uh, guests yes. that have been on the series, and we've, you know, we've met everybody coming through the house and having makeup and this and that. And it's been, it's just connection because you're talking about something that, for the most part, every one of us relates to. Yeah. Uh, and I think that was that was said in women and mental health a lot, wasn't it? About the connection. lack of connection. And when we just take away, when we strip it all down, exactly, we're, we're all f women. We're all able, you know, we do love to talk. Yes. Some of us more yes. than others. We all <laughs> around this table certainly love to talk. But um, that, that feeling of like, I may not know you, but you and I are going through the same thing. You're not so alone. You're not alone. You are not alone. You know? And that's such a beautiful thing. Yeah, agreed. This connection shows everyone you're not alone. There are other women who are going through these things, maybe slightly different, yes. but we're there with you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Which is really powerful. <laughs> well, there you go. Well, ladies, I'm going to yeah. say cheers to that. Oh, cheers, cheers, cheers to the close of season cheers. one. Cheers, cheers. indeed. Thank, Thank you, you. to everybody Thank you. who has commented. Thank you for everybody who has got in touch with the she word. Thank you every to every single person who's been a part of it, but everybody who's watched it and supported it. And of course, a massive thank you to anybody and everybody who supported this show and. Season two. Here we come. Here we come. <laughs> My morning starts here with an experience that's unforgettable. A precise roast and a generous crema. Taste the unforgettable espresso.